most of the time in mathematics, when we write down a new definition of a concept, we want to do it in a very concrete and precise manner. However, because we're at the beginning of our course, our first definition, it can't be defined precisely in terms of prior concepts. We are going to give for our first concept, the concept of a set, a very intuitive definition. And this is going to provide the basis for pretty much the rest of the course. So what is a set? A set is a collection of objects. And perhaps this is easiest to justify with an example. For instance, we can consider this set of students in a particular class, perhaps well, our class. We could also imagine a set that's just like a bunch of different numbers. I, I use a sort of a funny notation here, squiggly brackets. It just lists all the different numbers in the set. So this set B here consists of these objects, 1, 3, 4, and 7. Uh, one set you might be very familiar with is this set of integers. We've seen this before. This is numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, as well as negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. And really, a set can be a collection of, of just about anything. You sort of imagine it as being this bag, and then there's a whole bunch of different objects inside of that bag. Now, a little bit of terminology is that the individual objects inside of our set are going to be referred to as elements. So let's bring up our three different examples of sets that we have again. We're going to have, let's take set A, students in this class. Well, I don't know if there's a student called John yet, but I'm just going to imagine that there's a student named John. And the way we write this is a kind of funny notation. We use a symbol that looks a little bit like an E, but what this symbol stands for is element. It is an element of. And in this particular case, John is going to be an element of the set the students who are taking this class. And indeed, the name element and the name object, which is what we used before, are more or less the same kind of thing. It's just element is our fancy math terminology for it, and this symbol is going to be our fancy math symbology for it. Let's look at uh, set number B. Well, there's a whole bunch of elements. There's element 1, 3, 4, and 7. Maybe I'll just choose one of them, like 3, and I can say that that is inside of my set B. And finally, for the integers, well, 3 is also an element of the integers. And notice that the integers are written in a kind of funny way. It's a z, but it's a z with two lines here. That's how I denote the integers. What about how to denote an element that is not going to be in a set? For example, 3 is an integer, but pi is not an integer. And here's how I denote this. Pi, I put the element symbol, and I put a line through it. It is not in Z. So this means not an element of. One of the interesting features about a set is that the, the order of the elements in the set, how I list them, and also whether or not I repeat elements over and over and over again does not matter. So for instance, if I'm going to look at the set 1, 3, 4, 7, so this is a set we've seen before. This set is exactly the same thing as the set where I just sort of scrambled them. 4, 7, 3, and 1. And this set is also the same set as if I scrambled them, but I add a whole bunch of things. Let's put in like a bunch of different 4s and a couple 7s and a 3 and a 1. All of these sets I am claiming are going to be the same thing. I mean, you can sort of imagine this like, I have a bag of candy, and it has maybe three different flavors in it, but my set, it doesn't care about how many different items there are of each individual flavor. You just say, these bags are going to be equivalent, or they're going to be equal if your bags have the same three flavors, the same three elements, and that the order in which you pull them out of the bag, or how many of them are in the bag, that is not what we are considering. So a set does not care about order or repetition. The next bit of terminology we're going to look at is the idea of a subset. If I have a set, this collection of objects, what if I only take not all of the objects, but some portion of those? This is going to be the idea of a subset. So we are going to say that A is a subset of B, if it's the case that, that every one of the elements of A is also going to be in B. So B is your larger set, and A is your smaller set. And the notation that we're going to use for this is that 
A is a subset of B is going to use this sort of weird notation. It's kind of, you can think of it as like a less than or equal to sign, but a less than or equal to sign has like a hard angle here. This is like a sideways U, and it means A is going to be a subset of B. So let's take an example of this. I want to imagine that I have the set, maybe my B could be 1, 3, 4, 7 again. That's my big set. And then a subset of it is, is some sub-collection of these elements. So for instance, I could say the set 1, 3 is going to be a subset of 1, 3, 4, 7. Because Every element that is in A here, the left-hand side is going to be my A, is also inside of B. B is more elements, that's why A is a subset. As a second example, we could go the other way around. Uh, what happens if it's not going to be a subset? How about this? I'm going to take the subset, or the set rather, 1, 8. Now, 1 and 8, the 1 is inside of this B over here. But 1, 3, 4, 7, there's no 8. So this is not a subset. I write a subset symbol and I put a not through it. This is not a subset of the same B that I had above. One final example. We've seen before the integers. And the integers have all sorts of different subsets. And one of the subsets that they have is the even integers. So if the integers are numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and then the even integers are 0, 2, 4, 6. So every even integer has the property of being an integer. So I can say that the even integers, I'm not going to give a fancy symbol for that, it's not quite common enough. The even integers are going to be a subset of the integers.